All right, welcome back everyone. So now we're gonna talk about what happened to the Minoan civilization. And so if you hadn't seen part one of this lecture, definitely wanna watch part one, which is who were the Minoans? And I talked a little bit about them. Part two is what happened to them? Because the civilization that was discovered by Sir Arthur Evans around 1900 AD disappeared, remember, it disappeared in ancient times and it took until 1900 AD for them to be discovered. So the question is, what happened to them? And there's a few theories up to what possibly happened to the Minoan civilization. So we're gonna kind of go through them in a couple slides. And if you're not familiar with this image of the Minotaur, I will explain why we're looking at this image as we get to our last slide here. So here we go. So in terms of the fall of the Minoans, there's a few key words I want you to know, and I'll just kind of go through this. So the time period of when the Minoan civilization seems to fall is around 1400 BC, right? And for those of you who taken, are taking my class, the History 110, uh, you know, we hear about the Sea People very often. And was it the Sea People again who impacted the Minoans? Maybe, maybe not as likely this time the Sea People, but I put them up there because I know students oftentimes ask about it. Uh, so there's a couple of ideas. One idea as to what happened to the Minoans was natural disaster, right? And I want you to understand that they disappeared to a point where until 1900 AD, until Sir Arthur Evans discovered them, they were basically just a myth, right? Um, and so how, you know, what happened to them? And so one thinking is there was a volcanic explosion from this island of Thera around the year 1500 BC. Uh, the volcanic explosion Thera is not on the island of Crete, it's off the island of Crete over here. And perhaps that volcanic explosion could, you know, lead to all sorts of things, tsunamis, and um, it could lead to the ash coming over the sky and making it hard to, for, to grow crops. Um, you know, in one of my other modern Western Civ classes, I lecture on the Icelandic volcano in 1793 that helped cause the French Revolution, believe it or not. Uh, so volcanoes can be very devastating, you know, and again, this is again geography. I talk about this over and over and over again. So those of you in the History 110 class following along in that chart of mine on geography, yes, the geography may have protected the Minoans for a long time, but ironically, it could have been a geographical uh, issue in terms of a volcanic explosion that helped to end them. Another idea is maybe there was a volcanic explosion and some sort of invasion. And if that invasion was not the sea people, it could have been the Mycenaeans. So basically kind of after this volcanic explosion, the Minoans are just kind of, you know, there hobbling along and then the Mycenaeans come in and they just end them. And who are the Mycenaeans? Well, those are your early Greeks who come in with a very different writing. Uh, they're clearly Greeks. They, you know, the Minoan writing was not Greek. The, the Mycenaeans will use a Greek writing. I'm going to cover that in our, in our next lecture is actually coming up. Now there's another story as to what happened to the Minoans. And I want to again emphasize, folks, this is just a story. And it's a story of a Greek myth, and I'm going to give you the super Cliff Notes version of this, of what happened to the Minoan civilization. And so according to the myth of that, that comes from the Greeks, remember, this is a Greek myth, this is what happened to the Minoans. According to the Greeks, there was a king of the Minoans named Minos, right? You can see his name there. And King Minos was the king of this Minoan civilization, and he wanted to get married, but being a king, he didn't want to marry just anyone. He wanted to marry someone very, you know, special, and so he ended up marrying this half-goddess by the name of Pasiphae. And so he marries this half-goddess, you can see here, and all is fine and dandy, except, you know, she gets kind of bored with him. After all, he is a mere mortal. And again, there's much more to this story than what I'm giving you, but long story short, she ends up developing a lust for a creature that lives in the sea that was this bull-like creature, and she wants to have a child with him. So she goes to the inventor of the Greek gods, a man named Daedalus, you don't need to know his name for this, and they ask her to ask Daedalus to invent something so she can have a child with this creature, and they do. And what kind of funky kid are you going to get when a child, when a half goddess is breeding with this bull-like creature? Well, you're going to get what we call a minotaur. So that was the previous image. I'll show it to you again in a second here. Uh, the minotaur. And a minotaur is a creature that's half man, half bull. 
Now, the story goes on because now that they have this Minotaur, Minos is very upset. He takes this Minotaur, he imprisons the Minotaur, and then he decides he's going to feed the Minotaur. Now, what does a Minotaur eat? A Minotaur eats people, but he doesn't want to feed him his own people. According to this Greek legend, he feeds them seven Athenian men or boys and seven Athenian girls on a regular basis. Well, you know, and, oh, and by the way, he imprisons them in a maze shape in a prison shape like a maze called a labyrinth now this is the kicker when we've done archaeological digs on the island of kenosis people have said "Ooh, there's evidence of perhaps a labyrinth being built there and so a prison that's kind of a maze is a labyrinth and so there the minotaur is held captive he's being fed these greeks the greeks don't like being having their people fed to the minotaur so one day there was a Greek hero by the name of Theseus and Theseus decided he was not going to allow this any happen anymore. And so he pretended to be this average Greek, but he wasn't an average Greek. He was a Greek hero. He snuck into the, to, to the well, he got into the, the, the labyrinth and he used his clever ways and he managed to slay the Minotaur. And when he slays the Minotaur, the power of the Minoan civilization comes to an end and the Greeks are free from the Minoan threat and the Greek world thrives. Now, of course, this is all pure mythology. There's no such thing as a real Minotaur. And I actually have to emphasize this because believe it or not, one year I was lecturing in this in class and after I do this lecture, a student raises his hand and as straight face as could be can go, so are there any bones of the Minotaur anywhere? I'm like, there's no such thing as a half man, half bull creature. And of course, if you look at the words Minotaur, Taurus, right? You know, if you the word Taurus, uh, bull. Um, so there you go. So more than likely, you know, it was some natural disaster followed by the invasion. Uh, so here again is the Minotaur, right? If you want to take another good look at it and the good image of the Minotaur with its battle axe and all of that. Uh, so this half man, half bull creature, that, that, that is part of the story. So at the end of the day, the Minoans fall, right? And when they do fall, you know, whether it is around like 1400 BC, roughly around that time period, what's gonna happen next? And what's gonna happen next is of course, our next story. So let me go to our slide here and remind us of what we've been talking about. So when we start this class, you know, we talked about a little bit off this map, but if you go a little bit over here further, eastward you know we go further east and we have our our civilizations in the middle east and you know mesopotamia and then we of course you know left off talking about the ancient persians and this was the far uh western end of the ancient persian empire that we had talked about and now we have talked about the minoan civilization down here and so now that we're done with the Minoans, what we could do is shift gear to what we're going to spend a lot of time in my Western civilization class talking about, which is the ancient Greeks. So now we can talk about the ancient Greeks. And unlike a lot of these other civilizations that we go through pretty quickly in early Western civilization, now that we've gotten to the Greek world, we're going to spend, you know, my History 110 class several weeks on the ancient Greeks. And we're going to talk a lot about, you know, the Greek geography, the, 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 the Greek political system. We'll talk about the Greek wars and battles that were fought, some really epic battles. We'll talk about, you know, um, some Greek writers and science and uh, all those kind of things associated with Greek history as well. Culture, you'll be reading uh, the play Antigone. If you haven't read that, you know, you make sure you want to read that for my History 110. 10 class it's in your reader um, so all that good stuff so anyways so that's what we're to have moving forward so that's our Minoan civilization part one was a little bit about them some of their characteristics and part two is mainly about their fall and then we're moving on next to study the ancient Greeks it's gonna be a lot of fun all right uh, that's it again if you have any questions please let me know otherwise everyone uh, do well be well all right thank you everyone bye